Make us stewards of ourselves, that we may be servants of others. Take my words and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire for Jesus' sake. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. <coughs> Blessed Leap Year Day. <laughs> How does one say that? I guess that's good enough. I've never heard this day called Leap Day. But perhaps that wouldn't be a bad way to start this message. Blessed and even happy Leap Day. For the past four weeks, I have been taking a course online for my continuing education credits in Celtic Christianity. It's a wonderful course. And as I really love the theological perspective of the Celtic Christians, which have been called very heretical in many Orthodox settings, I want to start off with a poem prayer that kind of encompasses all of that perspective for me. It's called fashioned for joy, and it goes like this. As the hand is made for holding, and the eye for seeing, thou hast fashioned me for joy. Share with me the vision that shall find it everywhere. In the wild violet's beauty, in the lark's melody, in the face of a steadfast man, in a child's smile, in a mother's love, in the purity of Jesus. Amen. I can read it again. <coughs> Pay attention, it is a beautiful prayer. And perhaps someday I'll find someone to set it to music. But for now, I'm just going to repeat it again here. As the hand is made for holding, and the eye for seeing, thou hast fashioned me for joy. Share with me the vision that shall find it everywhere. In the wild violet's beauty, in the lark's melody, in the face of a steadfast man, in a child's smile, in a mother's love, in the purity of Jesus. Amen. So how do we get this joy? How do we get this vision of joy and find it everywhere? What is it that keeps us most from finding that joy? Is it what we traditionally thought of as the opposite of love? Hate? Or is it more a more modern interpretation of the opposite of love? Fear or simply indifference? What is the most important practice through which you can find yourself in love and joy with all of the created life? It is faith. Now, faith isn't simply believing in a thing. As a matter of fact, faith is in the very middle of the greatest doubt you have ever known. Right there in the middle of doubt, that's where faith is. The results we are looking for, or even the, 
the actions to attempt the impossible. It cannot possibly be, can it? The money we need to build the next project will never be found, will it? The things we need to do, the work, cannot be done without a lot more money. Or can it? The life of the little girl cannot be saved. Or can she? The knowledge and understanding of truth cannot possibly be learned. Or can it? The great big weight of resentment and guilt in my heart cannot be lifted. Can it? It is impossible, isn't it? Not even God can fix that one. Can she? And yet, through the practice of faith, which can be engaged through prayer, conversation, confession, absolution, song, sometimes even dance, <coughs> conversion and prayer. Oh, I said that already. But most often, faith takes an awful lot of prayer. What is it in your heart this year that is holding you back from finding forgiveness either for your own faults or for the faults of others? Do you still hate your next door neighbor because he yelled at your dogs for barking all last year? Do you still hate the thief that stole the battery out of your truck while it was parked right outside your house the other day? Do you still hate your great uncle because well, you can't really remember why, but it's still a really good reason, or at least your mother thought so when she began the resentment all those years ago. Do you hold on to your own guilt for the simple or even complicated mistakes you have made in the past little while? Do you remember back when someone asked you to help them and you didn't just because you didn't feel like it? Do you keep remembering and can't seem to let go of the knowledge that you did not give that person a ride and it really wasn't that big of a deal to have done it? Do you keep finding that no matter how hard you work, you don't have it as easy as the person who lives right down the street has it, and you don't know why. On many days, I hurt other people, whether I mean to or not. Almost every day, I see others get hurt. And on most days, in one way or another, my heart is broken by someone else who may or may not have meant to do it. How can we live through this broken heartedness and heal? How do we find forgiveness in our hearts? I don't really know. And there truly is not any one clear answer. But there is one thing I do know. We can't do this faith work alone or in isolation. We have to work together to get it done. We practice praying, singing, sharing our stories, confessing, crying, absolving, and guess where all that happens? Right here in our faith community. That's our purpose, to hold each other when things get hard and when things are easy. To pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Let's listen to the words of St. Paul from this evening's scripture. The promise that he would inherit the world 
did not come to Abraham or his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. We come together and worship God, whose healing presence makes the forgiveness possible, and we celebrate our struggles and our successes. We try and keep steady to confess, to let go, to reach out, and hold the hands of our fellow community members. We study together, pray together, and dance together. But only when we faithfully forgive can we be truly united. When we find ourselves in that place of balance, of faithfully practicing forgiveness of ourselves and one another, then we can find the joy that that Celtic prayer offers us. It isn't a giddiness, a funny response. It's a state of steadfast steadiness, that joy. And it comes first from faith, then forgiveness, then faith again. Let us pray. As the hand is made for holding and the eye for seeing, Thou hast fashioned me for joy. Share with me the vision that shall find it everywhere. In the wild violet's beauty, in the lark's melody, in the face of a steadfast man, in a child's smile, in a mother's love, in the purity of Jesus. Amen.